All right, so we've got all of the tweaks made. I've got slightly better neck topology, um, though I still don't like this diamond quad right here. But we will have to make do because we need to keep moving. All right, uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do is before I apply the mirror modifier, I'm going to lay out my UVs. Uh, and for the head, most head UV layouts are going to be very similar. Um, and so that is I'm going to select right here this edge uh, and this head this edge will typically be covered by a hairline uh, unless like me you were rapidly losing your hairline um, but the idea being that whatever seam that appears in the texture will be covered by hair or hats, or helmets, or hoods, or whatever your character happens to be wearing. Um, also, the way that we're going to be adding a texture to this, it'll make that seem more invisible. Um, but so I'm going to select this edge right here, and let's see, do I want to go one more? Yeah, what the heck? We'll go one more. And I'll hit Control E, and I will mark that seam. Make sure you mark the seam and not the sharp. It's an easy mistake to make, um, so just be mindful of that. Uh, the next thing is the main seam, which is going to go from here down to the base of the neck. Um, and I want the next seam. We'll go to about here, I think. Yeah. Um, and the way that I'm going to connect these is I've got the two endpoints selected. And then I'm going to hit go to my select menu and shortest path. Oh, that's not what I was hoping the shortest path was. So instead, I will select one more vertex in the middle and now select shortest path. And I got halfway there. Reselect that so it's active and try one more time. All right, well, whichever way you select all of these verts, select the verts and mark those as a seam as well. Um, we're going to select this as a seam. And need to go up the center right here so I can select this. Um, actually, no, I'm a liar. That's not what I want to do. Um, let's see. I'm going to separate the ear out. So for the ear, I'm going to select, let's see, this edge right in here. I kind of have to do this in wireframe. I'm actually going to disable my mirror modifier for the moment because it's going to be easier for me to see on the inside of the ear. Select this edge all the way around it. And then select these. Okay. Control E and mark seam. Um, this ear canal is actually capped off at the end and it's not going to deform well uh, if I leave it that way. So I'm going to select this edge loop around it. Okay, if you can see that, I'm going to mark that seam. And then, if you can follow this along, I'm going to select this edge right in there. Actually, no, I'm going to select the one above it. I'm going to mark that as a seam. And let's see, how will that unwrap? Let's select, go to edge select mode so I don't select this one. Um, you know what, I'm not even going to mark that because it doesn't matter. It's the inside of the ear and nobody's ever going to see it. Uh, sometimes I'm a perfectionist and sometimes I just have to move on. Uh, I'm going to do a similar thing with the nostrils. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do that yet because I want you to see what happens if you don't do it. So we've got that. 
Um, let's see, do we need any other edge loops? Or seams, excuse me. I don't think so. Sometimes you'll see other seams, but I think we'll be all right here. Yeah, OK. So I've got that marked. Um, that's really the last thing that I want to do with proportional or with with the mirror modifier on the on the model. So at this point, I'm going to save it, and I would recommend either duplicating the mesh, saving it as a backup, and moving it to a different layer, or just saving a new version of Blender. Whatever you want to do, um, but it's nice to have a, a make sure you have this model with the mirror modifier on and a saved copy of it before you apply the mirror modifier. Um, just to have a backup, and not that it's terribly difficult to re-add a mirror modifier, but just saves a step sometimes. Um, with that being said, I'm going to click apply uh, in object mode, click apply on the mirror modifier, and if I hit tab, you can see that my UV seams were mirrored across the model. So I saved myself all of three minutes, but it's still, it's three minutes saved. Um, there's no reason to mark any more seams than you have to. Now. It will be necessary to mark seams in other places on the body, but that's going to be a separate UV map. We're just worried about the head here, and you'll see how that plays out um, momentarily. Now, before I unwrap this mesh, uh, what I want to do is I want to make a couple of uh, tweaks to the face, because nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical, and now that the mirror modifier is applied, we can make those asymmetrical tweaks. Uh, and really, this is just kind of preference. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three edges right here with proportional editing on. Uh, and they don't have to be very elaborate tweaks. I'm actually going to go out of local view um, and hide that. And don't worry about the skeleton on the arm. That was something I was testing out. Um, actually, I'm going to hide the skeleton just so you don't get distracted. Um, all right, so I'm going to select these and with proportional editing on, I'm just going to oops, move my proportional editing down, hit comma on the keyboard to scale around the local origins or local geometry selection. I'm just going to move that up just a little bit. And I might, let's see, select that right there. Actually, we'll just select that. And I'm going to move that up just a little bit, make this eye just slightly more open. Um, I might, you know, if I want to bake any expressions into the face, um, I can select this corner, corner vert with proportional editing on. Uh, and kind of curl up one side of the mouth if I want to. If I select both of them, I can curl up both sides of the mouth. Whoops. Shift, select that. I can curl up both sides of the mouth if I want to. Make it more of a frown, whatever I want to do. Uh, and I don't have a mirror on my desk, so I can't see what asymmetry I have, although I'm sure there's a fair amount of it. Um, and these things just kind of help make it feel a little bit more realistic. You know, if you've had a broken nose or something and you want to move yours a little off center, you can do that. Whoops. I mean, that might be a little bit too much, but if you've got a boxer or whatever, that's an option, certainly. Um, you know, play around with it, get whatever asymmetry in there that you feel like you need. Let's maybe just a couple more tweaks here. I'll bring that up just a little bit, just for some variety. Yeah, I don't like that. Eh, we'll keep it. Um, yeah. So make those tweaks. Uh, maybe one year is a little bit higher. Maybe one year is a little bit larger. Whatever you whatever you feel is appropriate. Um, and then we're going to unwrap it. So, 
to unwrap. I'm going to select everything. And again, let me hide those bones. And the ulna. Okay. Uh, I've selected everything, and let me split my 3D view. I'm going to turn this into my UV image editor. And I'm going to hit new. We're going to call this um, head underscore UVs. I'm going to make this 4K, so 4096 by 4096. And I'm going to do generated type. I'm going to set to UV grid and click OK. So we got this big old grid with all these squares and pluses on it. Now if I come over to my 3D view and hit U and unwrap, this is what we get on the grid. Okay, so this big section right here, these are the UVs for the torso. And you can see it's coming out as a circle because there's no seams in the torso. So it's, uh, it's basically a big cylinder and it doesn't know what to do with it. Um, but we're not going to worry about texturing that part of the torso. That'll be a separate unwrap. So I'm going to select all of these by just hovering the mouse over them and hitting L. And then I'm going to hit W and weld. And that's going to weld them down into a single vertex, or not vertex, but a single point. Uh, and I'm just going to move that point down to the, uh, actually, let me turn proportional editing off as well. And I'm just going to move that down to the corner keep that out of the way. All right. Then what we're left with, if I select everything and then C and middle click and deselect that vertex, uh, we've got the head and then we have ears and we have a couple other little bits and pieces. So I'm going to, with those selected, I'm going to go to my UVs menu and I'm going to uh, average island scale to make sure that they're all the same relative size and then I'm going to pack the islands and that what that's going to do is it's going to make them as large as possible to fill up as much space uh, as possible and ideally when you're doing UV unwrapping is you want to fill as much as of the available texture space as you can and so pack island is is a great way to start doing that okay. so that gives me this and if I uh, in my 3D view, if I change it from solid to textured, uh, we're not going to get anything, and that's because we're not telling Blender to apply this texture to the model. So we need to set up a very simple material. So I'm going to go to my Materials tab, and I'm going to remove all... Uh, oh, I can't do this. I have to go into Object Mode. I'm going to remove all of these materials. Um, okay. Just click new, and I'm going to call this one um, skin underscore face because I don't want it to be skin head, skin face. Um, and again, I'm in cycles. I'm just going to change the color. I'm going to click on this little button right here. I'm going to set that to image texture, and the image I'm going to select is head UVs. Okay, and that, that gives me this. The UV test grid, which is what this is called, is now being displayed on the head. Now what the point of this is, is to be able to visualize what's called texel density. That's, you can think of it the same thing as pixel density, and it just refers to texture pixels and the density of that. And what you want is you want the squares to be as close to the same size as possible. Uh, and the, small, the smaller the square, the more detail that you're packing into that area. Okay, so these larger areas are going to be a little bit more distorted. So if I go back into edit mode, uh, you can see as I move these around in, uh, in the UV image editor, they, you can see the movement being mirrored in the 3D view. So uh, it's packed pretty well. The only thing that I really want to do is rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, and that's just because it's easier for me to work with it this way than it is to work with it sideways. 
uh, and then I'm going to move it back so that it is covering the uh, space. And I'm going to zoom in here real close just to make sure that it is still in the in the texture. I don't want it to be off the edge because then you could get a scene that you don't want. And we're good. Okay. And then what I can do is there's a button down here. Uh, keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. So if I s activate that and then deselect everything over here and then using L to just select. Uh, oh, I can't select the islands this way. I have to use circle select. Uh, I can, as I select it, I can see what I'm selecting on the mesh and how I can see how it translates. Okay. So uh, just to kind of figure out what's going on here, if I select this area, you can see I'm selecting the ear. Although I'm selecting a little bit more, so I'm actually going to disable the keep selection in sync because that's really getting in the way more than anything. Um, these are my ears right here. So if I move these over, you can see the texture is changing in the 3D view port. Uh, and then we've got a couple other things down here. Um, if I zoom in on the eye, we've got this little geometry right here that's just adding a little extra detail to the corner of the eye. That's what this is. Oops. Okay. And then right here is, I believe, the inside of the ear canal. Let's zoom in on it. And as we move it around, yep, you can see that the texture moves in there. Now, now that we have this test grid, what are we going to do with it? Well, we want to see how close we can get all of these squares to be the same side on the face. So the only big areas are the lips and the nose. And there's a few different tools that we have to adjust that. Um, the first thing you notice is the nostrils. You can see how they come to a point here. And this is what I was talking about. If you don't set up those seams, you get this distortion. Uh, and granted, these aren't things that are super visible, but it's still nice to add in that uh, seam uh, when you can. So I'm going to select uh, this edge loop and actually I'm going to add in one more edge loop right there. And I'm going to mark that seam. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side since the mirror modifier is not applied anymore. And mark that seam. So I've marked that, and then I'm going to go into edge select mode and select that edge and its corresponding edge on the other side and mark those. Okay? Now, uh, I've already unwrapped the head and I've got it, I've done a little enough work to it that I don't want to have to redo it. So if I only want to unwrap those again, or just yeah, just the, the nostrils, I can just select this area in the 3D view. So I'll select that, and vertex select, and control plus to grow the selection. Um, and then I can hit U and unwrap. And that is enormous. So now if I select everything, uh, deselecting that little body point right there, and then UV is an average island scale again. And pack islands, oh, it rotated again. Oh well. Just have to rotate it back real quick and reposition it. Anyway, that's why you want to... Uh, unwrap the nostrils separately. I'm going to move that back to right there. Oops, right there. Okay. So, um, we need to get the distortion down as much as we can. And Blender has a newer tool um, where you can sculpt UVs. 
So in the UVs menu, we've got this UV sculpt option, and the, the shortcut is Q. If I select that and then hit T in the UV editor, I've got some UV sculpt tools. I can grab, relax, and pinch. If I select my relax uh, option, brush, uh, I can drag it over the nostrils or over the nose, and you can see it moves the uh, excuse me. It moves the UVs around, and that change is reflected in the nose. So if I zoom in here and zoom out in the UV image editor, you can kind of see it. It's subtle, but as I if I undo and redo, you can see that it is in fact having a, a change. Now you can change the strength of it. Um, you can change the radius of it. These options are for pressure sensitivity if you're using a stylus. Um, so you can relax it. You can also uh, turn proportional editing on. Again, I like to use connected. Select. Oh, you got to turn off uh, sculpting. So UVs, UV sculpt, turn that off. You can select UVs here. And then with proportional editing on, you can kind of scale them up and you can see that change being reflected in the nose. Okay. Now, one thing to notice is as you scale these up, we're getting distortion uh, in other places. Okay, so it's a balancing act between distortion um, and average size of the uh, texture. So I'm going to scale it to maybe, I think that actually looks pretty good. Okay, so before and after. Uh, same thing with the lips. You can kind of circle select this area. And scale it up just a little bit. Uh, I am by no means an expert on UVs and unwrapping, but uh, I think I think that'll work. Uh, we can see we've got some stretching on the ears as well, so I'm going to find the ears, and I'm going to turn on. Uh, UV sculpt again, and I'm just going to smooth them out, I think. Go to tools, relax, and let's see. Where is that? I think that's up here. Um, well, it's not really doing what I want it to do. Let's try, let's try this. Select all of these. Now it's really starting to chug, and that's probably because it's a 4K texture. But we select those, and we'll select the corresponding ones on the other side. And, oops, not these. Yeah, it's running really slow right now. All right, and let's see. Let's try Alt S. No, nope. Control minus to decrease the selection a little bit, and Alt S again with the proportional editing. Maybe. Oops. Or not Alt S, excuse me, just S, just scale. And that's looking a little bit better. I'm not super worried about the ears. Um, but now we can kind of see, yeah, the ears could probably use more work. But I'm going to go with that. So now we have a UV texture uh, established. Um, now we can move on to actually getting a texture on there. And to do that, we're going to do projection projection painting. Excuse me. Um, I should also note at this point that if you were going to hand paint your textures, uh, what you would do 
Let me zoom out here. Is in your UV image editor. You can go to UVs and export UV layout. All right, and then save it wherever you need to say it. Save it. We'll call this uh, week eight head UVs underscore class. Okay. And so when you export it, I will show you what that looks like. Let's see. Where did I save that? All right, so this is what an exported UV layout looks like. Um, from here, you could then open this up in Photoshop and hand paint um, your skin texture, your pore detail, your freckles, scars, whatever, tattoos, whatever you wanted to paint. Um, and if you were gonna do, say, a Mike Tyson face tattoo, this would be what you would do. You take the UVs, you would paint the tattoo right here. You could um, then export that resulting texture out with an alpha channel and then lay that over the top of whatever, whatever other texture uh, you put on your face. Okay. So we've got the UVs laid out. Um, let's get set up for projection painting. All right. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new texture that we can paint to. So when you actually start texture painting in Blender, it's taking that data and it's applying it to a 2D plane um, or image. And that's what the, that's the texture that it's using. So we need to create that. So I'm going to go, um, let's see, image, new image. We were going to call this head underscore color. I'll do 4096 by 4096. Um, I've heard a good rule of thumb is to have the texture at twice the resolution that you're going to be viewing it on. Um, I like to just use as high resolution of texture as you can. Anything past 4K, I haven't found a need for. So we're just going to go with 4K for here. I know these computers can handle it. Uh, generated type, I'm going to do blank and click OK. All right. Now, I'm going to tab into object mode, and then I'm going to go into texture paint mode. And then I'm going to hit T to bring up my tools. So the way that this works is you've got uh, different brushes and texture paint. So what you could actually do is just start painting directly here, whatever you wanted to do. So if you wanted to face paint or whatever, you could paint entirely in Blender, never have to touch Photoshop or GIMP or anything like that. But you can also paint with a texture. So we're going to create a new texture and we're going to call this, um, we'll call it face because I'm not feeling particularly creative at the moment. Then uh, over here in my properties panel, I'm going to go to my texture properties uh, and We've got material textures and we have brush textures. So we want brush, face, which is what we just called it right here. And the type is going to be image. And then we need to select what image uh, that we want to use. Now, I, uh, we all took our reference images earlier. Uh, in this case, I do believe they are saved. Let's see, reference head. Nope, they're not saved there. Where did I save them? All right, so I'm going to select my front image, open the image, and we won't see anything just yet. So what we need to do is we need to set the brush mapping. I'm going to set that to stencil. When we do that, when we mouse over into the 3D view, we will see the image show up. Um, but what we need to do is move that over. Uh, we need to click the image aspect and so now it won't be stretched so that's good. Um, and we also need to tell it where to put this the uh, the painting that we do. So if we go to uh, let's see where is it? 
it's moved from oh you know what I need to I think I need to upgrade real quick to 2.72 so give me just a second all right we're back now I've got this slots option now I can uh, set the available paint slots. Let's see. I don't remember exactly. Go to image. And yeah. So I'll set painting mode to image and canvas image to the color. All right. So now we can get rid of that and slide that over. Now we've got this image here in the 3D view. To move it around, you right click and drag. Uh, to rotate it, you control, right click and drag. And to uh, scale it, you shift, right click and drag. Okay. Um, then you can kind of line it up. Um, if you get it a little bit too screwy, you can reset your transform. You might have to redo the image aspect. So kind of line it up. And then you can start painting, basically. So here's, uh, I'm going to do one thing real quick, actually. Uh, and that is going to be Let's see. I'm going to not use this texture real quick. And I'm just going to paint with white over the whole thing. And you can see as I paint, uh, the texture uh, that I created, the head color texture, is updated with whatever I paint in the 3D view. All right? I just wanted to demonstrate that real quick. And if I go to solid view, uh, in paint, I'm just going to paint white over it real quick so that I can actually see the contours of my head as I paint. This is chugging a little bit because of the 4K texture and the fact that I'm recording at the same time. Okay. So now we will choose our face again. You can move it, hold down shift and right click to line it up. And I'm going to start with the eye. Um, just going to zoom in here a little bit better. Scale that up. Make sure I'm right about there or so. Okay, I'm going to turn my strength all the way up to one, turn off pressure sensitivity because I'm not using a tablet. Um, and then I'm going to turn my radius up and then just start painting. Okay. I'm going to paint around the eye. Now, as you paint, you have a few different options. Um, let's see, as I, oops, as I rotate around, let me get that picture out of the way. Whoa, scale down. Okay. You can see what it's doing. Um, there we go. Okay. So you can see how it's painting right under the surface of the mesh, and it looks really cool, and suddenly it looks like I have an actual face. Um, as you paint, you have a couple of different options. If you go to the Options tab, you have Occlude, Cull, and Normal. So if you hover over each one, it'll give you a tip. The occlude is only paint onto the faces directly under the brush. Uh, call is ignore faces pointing away from the view. And normal uh, will paint uh, mostly on faces pointing towards the view. So if you have something that is at an off angle, it won't paint on it as much. Um, if I turn them off and start painting over here, and then rotate around, you can see that it actually went through the, to the back of the head. Um, it's good for laying down a quick base layer. Um, 
but when you actually get into the more fine-tuned stuff, it's good to turn these back on. You can also adjust um, the angle of the face, so how far the face has to be facing away from you to not take the paint. Um, and then bleed option is, if we go over here to the 3D view, or excuse me, the UV image editor, bleed refers to how much over the edge of the UVs that it will put um, details. And I'm just going to bump that up to five just to give myself a little bit of extra breathing room. All right. So, and then the, the texture painting process is uh, just going through and, whoa, that's new. And moving the, the reference images around. Um, image aspect. Okay. Moving the, the, the reference images around and painting and really just taking the time to make sure everything is lined up and um, getting it in there. So right about, I think there will work. I'll paint on that. Okay. Now, sometimes you will see this weirdness happening, uh, and that is, for some reason, caused by having the subsurface modifier active. So if you just turn that off, it won't happen. It was a really frustrating thing until I read that. Um, okay, so that's how this works. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it's fairly straightforward once you get it set up. And you can switch back and forth between uh, tech, uh, solid view and textured view. Textured view won't have um, any kind of specularity. So if I go back to solid view, you can see there's there's some highlights happening. Um, but if we go back to textured, then you'll just see the, the color and no highlights. Um, and if we tab back into, or go back into object mode, whoops. We also need to apply the texture to the object, so I'm going to change this. If we go to my materials, change it from head UVs to head color, and you can see what we've got. We can turn my subdivision surface modifier back on. Okay, and now we have the beginnings of a face texture uh, with relatively minimal effort. Um, it's a pretty great way to get a face texture for those of us myself very much included, who can't paint decent looking things in Photoshop. Um, so we've got um, images, reference images for all sides of the face, or all sides of the head and the back of the head, um, where you can just change them if you go to your texture um, properties and just load up the different views. So I'll go back to my textures. You can see we've got back of the head, front, left side, right side, top, underside. Um, open up the different images. Whoa. Oh, undo that. Um, make sure you s switch it to the brush texture. And then, there we go, image, side. Okay. Now we can go back into texture paint mode. And continue painting. All right, so you can kind of line up the ears best you can. And paint all of this. Oftentimes I'll just be very generous at first and lay, lay down a base layer and then go back and kind of fix the seams. Uh, there isn't really a way to uh, blend between the two. There's not a a fall off option for texture painting. So you just kind of got to be careful about where you put the seams. Um, but I haven't really had too much trouble with that as I've been going through uh, this process. And then you save that real quick. Once you spend some time with it, then this is, whoops. That's not right at all. Let me actually find that texture again. Uh, hold 
down. So once you spend a little more time with it, then aside from the brown body and the fact that I don't have an arm, um, again, this was a, a really rough, you can see that the nose isn't finished and the ear is not finished, but um, it's a pretty great way to get a, a, a decent looking face texture without a whole lot of effort. Um, and when you do put more effort into it, you get some really wonderful results. Um, so yeah, next time we will actually set up the shader to make this look and feel a little bit more like skin, do some, a little bit of lighting, uh, and then do some cloth and probably some metal textures and just cover texturing in a little bit more detail. So until then.